Today on BCPOV, this wall ride almost gets the better of me. Yuka gets sketchy. And Eric. As fans of the channel will know, my wife Yuka and I have been on a massive road trip around Canada and America. And last week we rode in Arkansas, where I sent the biggest drop of my life. But with wet weather moving in, we decide to escape southwest to a warmer Texas, where we'll ride Spider Mountain, a lift accessed bike park about an hour away from Austin. But as you can see here, it's a pretty small hill. In fact, Spider Mountain only has 350 feet of elevation, which is pretty tiny in terms of mountain bike parks. To put this in perspective, the Empire State Building in New York City, with 102 stories, is 3.5 times taller than Spider Mountain. In comparison, Whistler Mountain at 5,300 feet is over 4 times the height of the Empire State, and 15 times the height of Spider Mountain. So yes, Spider Mountain is pretty small as bike parks go, but it's also open in the dead of winter. Something that can't be said for any other lift access bike park in America or Canada. But well, sometimes good things come in small packages. Is this true for Spider Mountain? Well, that's what we're here to find out. To get our day started, my wife Yuka and I hit up for a warm up lap. We chose a blue trail called Antidote. And it didn't take long for things to get fun. We're not just here to ride park. We're also here to meet a friend and fellow YouTuber. And once we make it to the bottom, he's there waiting for us. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Good. Nice to Great to finally Hello. meet you too. Eric from the YouTube channel, No Front Breaks. <laughs> Those that follow his channel will know that Eric rides with a prosthetic arm. And of course, this means that his bike setup is a little more unique than most. So let's check that out. On his right side, he attaches his prosthetic to his handlebar like this. But just this isn't enough to keep him attached to the bar, as he learned the hard way. So after a few crashes, he uses these rubber bands to stay secure to the bar. And since Eric has his prosthetic on the right, all the controls with his bike need to be done with his left hand, which requires some out of the box thinking. He runs two brake levers, one on top of the other. The top lever is for the rear brake, and the bottom lever is for the front. With a finger on each, he can still modulate each brake independently. And since he's using two fingers to brake, he's using an ergon grip to increase the surface area. And since shifting is usually done with the right hand, he uses something that you don't really see too much anymore, a grip shift. Thankfully, SRAM still makes these, and it's perfect for Eric's application. I gotta say, I thought Eric's setup was pretty interesting and well thought out. If you'd like to know more, he's made a more detailed video about his complete setup, and I'll leave a link to that down below. As we head back to the top, we decide to hit a black trail called Sticky Icky. But it doesn't take long... Oh. <laughs> ...till we have our first crash of the day. Did you get your wheel in here? Yeah, I, uh, <sighs> it slid. They just covered this up. It was a little like rock art. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, though. Good. All right, ready? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, for 
I must say though, it sure was nice to get a descent on some decently steep single track. We've been riding some relatively flat places lately, like Bentonville in Florida. And while those are good, this just reminds me of home back in BC. With our newfound confidence on the single black trail, we decide to ramp it up a bit and head down a double black trail called Stinger. It has just opened up after a few days of rain, so things are still a little slick. <laughs> oh, it's a bit slick. Yeah, it was a little slippery. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Lower down, we come to a section that Eric calls his white whale. Basically a scary feature that he hasn't done before, but he really wants to. Yeah, I don't know, it is kind of greasy today. Yeah, it is. Oh, is that a drop onto the wood there? Yeah. Okay. It's, like, it's not too bad. Yeah. I just don't like. Oh, there's a there's an easy way here on the left. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Simply a little slippery. Both Yuka and Eric are considering the direct line, but it's still a little wet right now. Brake modulation is critical here. The ride around looks way easier for sure. Like yeah, you could do that. Maybe it's too deep for it. Oh, uh, yeah. when you hit the void, just let go. Yeah. There's nothing to it. I, mean, I guess this is probably my mark here or something. Yeah, it's a little bit sliding. So you can see it's sliding a bit. I head up and ride the outside line for them, which is a little easier. So just centered on your bike. Just go slow. And then you hit the wood and you're just gonna roll off the wood. Perfect. Nice. <laughs> Sick. That wasn't bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Like you can control your speed the whole way. So like we can come back later today when it's more dry, like it's still kind of wet. So we did come back later and things were indeed drier. And so Yuka was ready to commit. <laughs> Eric is still a little nervous though. I can do this. I did the outside and it was like no big deal. Okay. Okay. Nice. Oh yeah, you got it, man. Sick. <laughs> wow. Nice one, dude. That wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Yeah, sick. It looks smooth? Yeah, it looks pretty pretty awesome. Yeah, you're pretty steady. Maybe your front tire's slipping a little in the rock, but I think that's happening for all of yeah, us. Yeah, I didn't think it was too bad. Yeah. All so, right. Congrats. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and it's these moments that make it all worth it. Nothing like a bit of progression to make your day. Nice. But as we continue on, another one of Eric's white whales is waiting for us. It's a really chunky, blocky section that's still a little damp as well. Should I roll into it? So it's basically a straight line, I think. Yeah. yeah. But Yuka, as usual, has no fear. <laughs> there you go. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit uh, scary. Yeah. It's wet and boots look shiny. Yeah, it's a little bit wet. Rocks that are covered with mud. But later in the day, it didn't go quite as well. Ooh. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's my wife. Now that both Eric and Yuka have had crashes, I guess it's my turn. There's another feature on a trail called Tarantula. A sizable wall ride with the Texan flag painted on it. When people see this feature, they just want to ride up to that white section. But the transition from the lower wall to the upper wall is a bit harsh and requires a bit of confidence to ride through it. So, as usual, I started small and went a little higher with each lap of the trail. But after a few laps, I was feeling pretty confident. I can go even higher, right? Whoa! Holy shit! Slid off the top of that thing. Oh, oh I scared myself. Well, it's kind of hard to tell what happened there, but it kind of fell off the wall. Somehow I lost my centrifugal force that was keeping me on the wall. And I think it's because of the way I've been entering the wall ride. I've been entering too late. When I hit the transition between the lower wall and the upper wall, I kind of got bounced off the wall. It's almost like I hit a jump. Plenty of people ride it this way without a problem, but when you come in at that higher speed, things start to get a little sketchy. The way I should have been riding it is by starting way earlier. That way I can avoid the transition between the upper and lower walls. It makes for a way smoother ride and it feels pretty darn cool when you get it. But I'm glad I took the time to go back and figure out what I was doing wrong. That's better way to do it. My sketchy moment turned into a teachable moment and I was able to make an improvement. At the start of the video, I said that good things come in small packages. And at 350 feet, Spider Mountain certainly isn't the tallest of the bike parks. But what it lacks in size, it makes up for in quality. The jump lines are good times, the technical trails were about as technical as anything during our road trip, and the wooden features definitely kept things interesting. That, and it's the only lift access bike park in America open year round. Good things really do come in small packages. So, we've got to thank Spider Mountain for having us. And of course, we've got to thank Eric for showing us around the park. His YouTube channel, No Front Brakes, features a ton of riding around Austin and further abroad. Have a look at his bike setup in the link I've shared down below. But, as always, thanks for watching and stay gnarly.